They're getting the Spider-Man a second weekend in a row. This is $72 million in its second weekend. All right, how much has it made all together now, please? All together, $223.6 million in 10 days. Gigantic. Just gigantic. It broke the second weekend record, knocking off Harry Potter, and the fastest film to hit the $200 million mark. Ever. Ever. And they say this is going to be a gigantic summer. We needed one. Uh, big, big films. We've had two really bad summers. Well, actually, full years yeah. of movies. So I'm yeah. thrilled. Finally, they got around to uh, going, hey, let's put action movies and big comic book pictures into the summer, and everybody will like them and go out and see them. That made sense. All right, here is uh, Premiere Magazine. Now, let me ask you right off the bat, Fezzi. They, uh, they think... Number one for the year is going to be Star Wars. Do you still agree? I agree with that completely. Attack of the Clones. All right. And Spider-Man will finish second to them. Now, according to this, they, uh, and now this, I guess, was made before uh, Spider-Man came out. Their prediction for the summer for Spider-Man, $250 million. Oh, all right. So after two <laughs> weeks, you have what for him? Two hundred twenty-three million dollars. Right, so you got to figure Spider-Man's going to go well over three hundred million dollars. They're going to have to have a huge drop off to hit that two fifty mark. <laughs> Where do you think Spider-Man will uh, finish up? Like maybe uh, bigger than the last Star Wars? Um, I'm not sure what that is. Spider-Man will finish. Uh, well, I'll say like over like three hundred fifty million. All right. Here's where they have uh, the Star Wars, which they said was going to be the uh, movie of the year, ranked, Fizzy. Their prediction for cash. They said Star Wars, the Attack of the Clones, would net $350 million. Oh. That's where you have Spider-Man. That's where I have Spider-Man. Yeah. I say Star Wars will hit four hundred. dollars uh, You have uh, $400 million. Are you writing all these down? Okay, thank you, Roy. The weird deal about that, Fez, is even though our three friends that have seen Star Wars have liked it, it's gotten panned by every critic that I've seen out there. New York Times ripped it a new ass. Newsweek ripped it a new ass. I think Time was harsh on it. I saw Leonard Moulton on TV over the weekend. I don't even know what his system is. He holds up a big crazy sign, yes or no, whether he likes it, and held up a big blue no sign. What is, uh, <laughs> and said, so, just didn't do it for me. What does he, uh, rank there? What is his deal? Is he, uh, what TV show is he on now? I think he has his own critic show, but he's always with Entertainment Tonight. But it's him and some bitchy chick that I think hate every movie that comes out. All right, for Star Wars, give me 460. Oh, nice. I'm going to go very, very huge. That's gigantic. And I'm a little nervous about that. I'll do for, my part. I'll go see this thing a lot. For Spider-Man, give me an amazing $400 million. So you got two films, same yeah. year, doing the gross of $400 million Almost a billion dollars between them. I'm a little nervous about it. Now, Fez, there for their number three pick, do you think you can guess here what they have as number three? My number three pick, I would think, I can't remember the name, you'll have to help me, it's the Tom Cruise, Steven Spielberg thing. That's Minority Report. No, they didn't pick that one there. They picked it high, but not there. For number three, they have Austin Powers in Gold Member, which they predict will make 220. 220? No. No, me neither. No. I'm going way lower on that. I'll say 150. I was going to go 140, so put that down. That's a little close. And let's also uh, bet that you can't go under or something like that so that, you know, it doesn't look like I'm just, uh... wow, I don't know. Here's, um... I mean, I know people are going to go see it and it'll have a huge opening weekend, but people aren't going to, they're not, it's not going to be must see. Right. Here is uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run a Fez. Hey, Jeff. Hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, there's no way Star Wars is going to break uh, Spider-Man's record for a weekend. I'll tell you why. We're not, we're not talking, well, first of all, we're not talking about the weekend. We're talking about overall. Okay, well, listen. Phantom Menace was the most, you know, they waited 20 years for that movie, and people were lined up, and it only made opening weekend, I think, 100 million, something like that. Yeah, it didn't and make that I much. Yeah, the difference is, uh, the reason why... 
is that he's not opening it and as many screens as some of the like Harry Potter and stuff like that. He only wants good screens, good sound. Oh, okay. George Lucas is going to put him in those auditoriums where they got the capabilities to show it the right way. His stuff, if you know what right. happened. Yeah. If you buy your stuff from me, I'll give it to you. <laughs> All right, so let's go Men in Black for number four for them, Fezzy. Wow. That seems awful high. Their prediction, $180 million. Do we want to see another big Men in Black picture? I say Men in Black probably doesn't do as well as Austin Powers. Really? I'll put Men in Black at 118. 118 million. I'm going to put Men in Black at 140, a lot lower than them, higher than Fez. I think, you know, people like that movie. It's been on video and stuff. Number five, Minority Report at 170 million dollars. Okay, I think it's going to do a little bit better than that. Yeah. Um, I'll put it over 200. I'll say 210. I think that this is my movie I kind of want to see. Spielberg, Tom Cruise, it's a, a wacky futuristic thing. I saw some stuff. I like it not as much as Fez. Give me 170 on that. 170 million. You getting all this as our recording secretary, Roy Hampton? Yes, I am. Now, I don't want you to, you know, file this in your butt cheeks. I really want you to put it up somewhere. Where you put everything else. Because me and Fez like to think of ourselves as movie theater psychics. Okay, we'll go over it each week. But every one of these movies... <laughs> each week. <laughs> every one of these movies we probably want to see. Now, we'll go over it at the end of the summer. Okay, that sounds you know, good. We're not doing, you know, I don't want to be part of the whole what's the weekend gross going to be. That's just stupid to me. I don't know why I should even care. But overall, I care. That's my thing. I care about the overall... Domestic gross. <laughs> and maybe we'll get uh, Gadesh on, the box office guru, yeah. to do it with us instead of doing it with Rory. Yeah. Who, let's face it, stinks. The only thing about. Physically and cinnamon. Cinnamon, mathematically. We haven't talked to uh, Ganesh. What's his last name? Gadesh. Gadesh? Gadesh. Something. Something. Right. Anyway, it's boxofficeguru.com. You can always uh, find out what stuff is happening there. Now, if Fez and I are right about Spider Man and. Um, the Phantom Menace, that'll jump up to like the number two movies of all time. Spider oh, Man. Yeah. Spider Man right. probably will beat it. Now, the first Star Wars is the number two movie of all time, but that was two different grosses that they have. The one in the 70s and then the re release in the 90s. Oh, okay. They combine those? Yeah. All right. E.T. at number three, even though uh, this last one didn't make all that much money. That's still over $400 million. Star Wars Episode One at 430 Four hundred thirty million, but this time I think you're going to get more of the real Star Wars fans going over and over. If I'm going to believe our friends, and I want to more than the critics, because this thing, let's face it, is pretty much critic proof as Star Wars. Yeah, people are going to turn out for it, and that's one of that's one of those films where you are going to listen to your friends, not Leonard Maltin, right. not Roger Ebert. Yeah, because your geek friends are the ones whose word you're going to take. The Foundry Music guys had me wanting to run out that <laughs> night and sit. They got me less excited for Spider-Man that was opening the very next day. You know, I like Spider-Man, but I'm not as flipped out as most of the people are about it. Acting like it's phenomenal. It's on the cover of Time Magazine. They acted like they predicted, like, well, of course, Spider-Man is the one we always identified with. What? He's more like us, not like Batman and Superman. Nobody would, uh, you know, uh, if you would ask comic book fans, what, no, Spider-Man's not even their favorite Marvel, I don't think. I think more people like X Men that actually read comic books. I like that Fantastic Four better. Fantastic Four is up there. The Hulk. I'm still waiting for a Thor movie. <laughs> Starring Heckler's cousin. <clears throat> All right, Fez, you won't even guess this. I won't even let you try. All right. Number six for them, and they have making a whopping $140 million. Triple X. Oh, no way. Vin Diesel. Starring the great Vin Diesel, who is this generation's Sly Stallone. I don't care if they get Kevin Nash Diesel. They're, uh, that's not making 160. I don't think so either. It seems, uh, I may, oh, 140. Did I say 160? I was it. 140 million, they said. 140, okay. I don't think, uh, anyway, this movie is going to make that kind of money. I say it barely makes 100. Wow, put me down for 100 even. And I am, and Vin Diesel, I'm being kind to you. Yeah, I'm going to go 90 million. I'm being really nice to you. And that's, I've enjoyed your work at Pitch Black. That Fast and Furious. I don't think Vin Diesel said 15 lines in the whole movie. 
They finally got him a character whose name he could spell. <laughs> Triple, triple X. X. My name is Triple X, man. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. I noticed those three X's on your neck. Number seven, they have making $130 million. Mr. Deeds. Oh, Adam Sandler. That sounds about right for me. People like Adam Sandler, they'll turn out for his comedy. Yeah. When they're tired of the action stuff, yeah. they need something to go to. I like the hundred and thirty million for Adam Sandler. I'm gonna go far less. And I remember what his last movie did it was crap. That thing opened on airplanes. <laughs> that where he played the devil's son. Have you ever seen that yet? Oh god, little Nicky, I've not seen that. Awful. Oh, that's right, I forgot how bad that was. Awful. So I'm thinking he's gone back to more of normal Adam Sandler. I'm gonna give him ninety million. Now remember we can't go over on these fuzz. Okay. Well, which, you know, I think I'm going to go over on the Star Wars and Spider-Man both. The only thing I'm worried about going over is Triple X. All right. And that, then I'll use the excuse that I thought it was Triple H. All right. Here's one I don't understand at all. Uh, Stuart Little 2. I guess this is the only children's movie of the year, right? Yeah. I didn't see the first Stuart Little. I didn't see Stuart Little 1. I thought one. it was Rich Little and I stayed away. <laughs> Stuart Little... Ooh, $85 million. And I'm being kind to the mouse, too. I don't know what to do there. I don't know where to pick here. I don't know what the last one made or anything about it. Can I change mine? Yeah. Stuart ahead. Little sucks. It's $70 million. It just stinks. All right, give me $80 million and I have no idea what it is. It's a mouse that talks, right? Yeah, it's a little mouse that talks. It's, best, uh, it's based on a book. And now he has, like, a pet chick as a sidekick. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> that thing should make a dollar. And it's the voice of Michael J. Fox. And I'm sorry, I'm afraid if I go see his movies, I'm going to get sick. You won't, Fez. You only get sick if you kiss him. Oh. All right. Or I think Whirl. Really? Yeah. Okay. Plus. Uh-oh. Uh all right, what are, you leaving uh -oh. A, what are you leaving a message with Katesh for? We said on a different night. We and said at the end of the summer. <laughs> Katesh <laughs> Pandia. You're calling him now and booking him for the rest of the summer, Al. Al, what, is, <laughs> Al, what has gotten into you lately? I'm the gay guy on Broadway. We're talking about movies, not Tony Awards. Spy report, Al's gay. <laughs> Spy report, Al's gay. <laughs> I never even know these things are getting done. Spy report, Al's gay. It's like little presents we get to open all day long. I'm the gay guy on Broadway. Guess what, I'm gay. Guess what? I'm gay. Uh, I'm gay. All right. <laughs> uh, we'd like to have you on sometime after the summer. When everyone comes back to the city. <laughs> Please, we'd never have you on before Labor Day. All right, Roy, read us back to Stuart Little. So I'm completely uh, confused from this. <laughs> I'm the gay guy on Broadway. Uh, it has total gross $140 million. That was the first one. That was the first Stuart We're Mellon. asking you what we did, not what they did. I don't care what oh, they did. Sorry. Go lay down. That's why you're being replaced by Kadesh Bandia. <laughs> Fez had $70 million and Ron had $80 million. You know, just because uh, something made money before doesn't mean that people are going to come out the second time. Exactly. Rocky II ought to be your answer there. Did that make less or whatever? I know it was always worse. <laughs> Each Rocky got progressively worse. Sure. It's the all fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me theory of movies. Everyone was dumb enough to walk into Stuart Little One. Then I could get tricked again into a talking mouse. Cats and dogs, that movie ruined it for every, for every talking animal that wanted to make a film. I like the fact that Roy now <laughs> thinks of himself as Katesh, and he's going to read this. What other movies made in, in the past? <laughs> he's the box office guru, Ronnie! Back off! That doesn't even make sense. I have been on a plane all day and I have taken pills. I'm not one of these guys that likes to sit around and laugh at my partner. But this time I think I had to. <laughs> he actually Would did you like to hear it again? Yeah. He's the box office guru, Ronnie! Back off! That's nutty. That's nutty talk. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I heard since I'm the gay guy on Broadway. <laughs> and that's him saying it when he's mad. I'd love to hear him happy yeah. for a change. So would I. Oh, he's so gay. All right, so what does, uh, what does Fez have and what do I have for Stuart Little? Two. Not what does Katesh have. 
All right. <laughs> Fez has 70 million. Ron has 80 million for Stuart Little, too. And I still think we're being, you know, pretty good to Stuart Little. Yeah. I hope the mouse appreciates it. Now, when Michael J. Fox says this, does the mouse have Parkinson's, too? I don't. Is the mouse sick? You're obsessed with this, aren't you, Fez? Yes. You're obsessed with the Parkinson's. I'm a hypochondriac. I'm afraid I'm going to get it. I was thinking uh, the other day, somebody told me they saw you shaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it was in the cold. So I didn't, I didn't have a problem with it. And I was nude. And then somebody said they saw you shaking at the urinal. And I go, he's supposed to. That's for health reasons. I was taught to tap. We went over it and over it. He's born to tap, baby. <laughs> All right, number nine here, Fez. This one right. will surprise you. Although it's a movie that you and I both want to see. I don't know if it's going to be, uh, they say, uh, making over $100 million. I think $110 million. Signs. Oh, I do want to see that with Mel Gibson. It's the crop circle movie. Yeah. But is it going to pay off? I mean, the, the preview looks good because it's crop circles. Who doesn't love crop circles? Well, what if we find out it's some kid in the neighborhood making the crop circles, like what happened in England? I hate that. I'll say $90 million for crop circles. I'm going to go even lower than you, Fez. I'm going to say $75 million. Just in case it bombs. And then you can call it Crab Circles. I will. Tell that one to Katesh. Maybe this will be as big a summer as they're predicting, though. That's a lot of money we're racking up yeah. here in these uh, top ten films. All right. Number ten, Fezzy. Road to Parishion. Have you even heard of this? No, I have no idea what that is. Tom Hanks. Plays a 1920s hitman or 1930s, something like that. He plays a hitman. Huh. Here's the picture of him, and it doesn't look like a summer movie. He looks kind of glum and upset. Yeah. And I think at the beginning of his movie, his kid and his wife get murdered. Wow. They've got that at $100 million. It's Tom Hanks. People show up to see Tom Hanks. They could get bad word of mouth. They could get back. You know, it's not what people are used to Tom yeah, Hanks it's not doing. Our lovable Tom Hanks. I don't know right. why, you know, he doesn't remake that movie with the bulldog. Everybody would love to see that. I say this is Tom Hanks' death to smoochie, like Robin Williams just had. Yeah. This thing tanks. I'll say $60 million. Wow. All right, I'm going to go lower than them, but I don't know about $60 million. That would be a bad one for Tom Hanks. Yeah. I'll go 85 and leave it, leave it at that. But this this is the kind of movie that could get just soaked under something else. Right. That, you know, has bombs and car chases and we're all happy. I say, I don't want to see him sit there and feel bad for himself. I see uh, him being out of character in this. He's going to pay for it at the box office and he goes back to playing retards and castaways the way we like it. Why does he just play a castaway a retard? What if Forrest Gump got stuck on that island? I think it would go something like this. <laughs> All right, a lot of good movies to see, though, right? Yeah, this I is mean, excellent. Out of the ten movies, you and I will probably see nine of them. Right, Stuart we'll, Little's off the charts there. Stuart Little, but, you know, also the problem with Stuart Little is we're not three. Yeah, well, there's the hotline. Is that Katesh? I bet you it is. If that, uh, we will talk to Katesh, but we said at the end of the summer, someone <laughs> just got hung up on on the yeah, hotline, was, too. Who was it? Uh, it was just a wrong number. Sure it was. Right. That's a lie. And a wrong number should go directly into here so we can have fun with it. Hi, this is the box office guru. Oh, sorry, wrong number. Security downstairs. Who's upstairs? Why is security calling us uh, with a wrong number, Roy? I'm going to tell you right now, Fezzy. One lies and the other swears to it. I know. You just said it was a wrong number. Who's ever running the phones out there just said it was downstairs calling. Roy, keep it up and I'm going to put you in the ring against the five-letter man. And that'll be the end of you. Someone's fibbing. We're going to find out who it is. Hey, uh, Mark. Mark, you're on Manifest. Hey, Mark. Guys, yeah. got to light up on Stuart Little, bro. Why? We're it's not three. Guys, it's, well, I got two boys, eight and ten. Okay? All my I think seem a little kids. old for huh. eight and ten. We're eight cute. and ten is too little for a talking, I mean, too big for a talking mouse movie. Yeah, but guess what? It was cute. It was doable. The only kind of theater went nuts on opening night at Spider Man. Uh, the only teenagers, old people, young people, everybody was giggling and clapping. Couldn't couldn't wait. Are we missing this Stuart Little thing, Fez? Did you see the first one? No. no. 
It was well done. If I see an animal movie, he Did has you to read be... the book when you were a kid. All right, hold on. You're driving me nuts. I'm trying to talk here. If I see a movie with an animal in it, he's got to be pitching. I like to see <laughs> sports animals, of course. Sports animals that somehow the dog got on the soccer team, the mule was the place kicker. Right. Fun stuff that could actually happen. Some air buds. That's what we're looking for. Now, is uh, is Stuart Little Mil the mouse that sang somewhere out there? That's Fievel. Why can't he come back? <laughs> With his big ears. He was adorable. I didn't see him go west, though, I'll tell you that. Fievel goes west and gets eaten. I think it was the third one. Nelson, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Hello, Nelson. Buddy. Yeah. Yeah, um, a movie they left off, which I think is going to be really big, uh, Insomnia. Let me tell you, I saw Insomnia over the weekend at the Tribeca Film Festival. I fell asleep, Fez. Get out. I fell dead asleep watching Insomnia. Insomnia made you go to sleep? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? Weird. Don't you think? It's a little too ironic. It's like rain on my wedding day. That should be the headline. This Robin Williams, he's got himself thinking he's got to turn his life around and be a villain. He's got two of them. Yeah. He's doing this and doing some kind of weird stalking photo map movie. Where he goes after a family whose pictures he develops. Actually, I didn't go see Insomnia. I, I, <laughs> I, I went down to the Tribeca Film Festival because uh, we took off Friday because, Fez, you went away to see your mom for Mother's Day. Yes, I did. And I took some of the tickets that we had to go down and see that uh, comedy and uh, rock show. Was that uh, the name of yeah, it? Yeah, the Rock and Comedy concert. All right, MTV gave it out. I guess American Express uh, was hosting the event. All right, here's the X. Counting Crows. All right. Out. Who's the, when's the last time you saw them? It's been a while. I can't count. Uh, Wycliffe came out. Wycliffe Jean. Okay. Uh, after that, Fez, we had, believe it or not, Mr. David Bowie. Nice. We're not promoting. We're promoting the show. We had all. We gave out like what a hundred tickets, Roy. Yeah, we gave away a hundred. We're promoting it for a week. Never mention the fact that David Bowie's going to be there. Imagine what a, a hotter ticket with that. He did five songs, Fez. Oh man, Sizzle. Two new songs that kicked ass. How did we not know David Bowie was going to be there? I don't. It goes on, and then it, it ends with uh, Sheryl Crow, right? Uh huh. Which a lot of people were heading to the train, but you know sure. she did her act. Oh yeah. Now, Fez, listen to the MCs. Also, we didn't promote, Whoopi Goldberg walks out. Very nice. Robin Williams, which we did not promote. Jimmy Fallon, Billy Crystal, and Robert De Niro. Nice show. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and Battery Park. And we had tons of these tickets. Yeah, we gave out a bunch of these tickets. Yeah. And we pushed it to Sheryl Crow and the Counting Crows. Yeah, handing out four packs, hand over meat fist. Yeah. And it was a beautiful night down there, too. Rory's down there with some chick. I saw him. Then oh, yeah? I, I see Al with a dude. Really? Yeah. Actually, I came back here and um, ate at the Brooklyn Diner. Al came like a drunk and pressed his face against the window at my family. What a weirdo. They never even came in to say hi. And my, and my family's going, who's that? And I go, it's Al. Freak. And this is all he yelled. I'm the gay guy on Broadway. Was he drunk, Rory? I I saw him very briefly. He seemed like he was stumbling a little bit towards the end of the concert. All right, everybody's with chicks except for Al. Yeah, he was like with three guys, too. It wasn't just one. And you know what's weird? You know yeah. what's weird is that whenever Al goes to a concert, he always wears his Frankie Say Relax <laughs> shirt. I don't care what concert it is. He's wearing his Frankie Say shirt. Here's uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're around Fez. Hey, Jimmy. Buddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was the guy who called up uh, last week and, and said, you know, Blackie Lawless was the, the singer from Wasp, and you were going to give me a prize, but I hung up. Right. So I called back, and I'm like, hey, you know, he was going to give me a prize, but I hung up. Dukes is like, oh, I'll give you tickets for Cheryl Crow and the Counting Crows. I'm just like, nah, you know, because I live down in Poughkeepsie. I'm like, forget about it. You right. Know? Cheryl Crow. Bowie. Bowie and De Niro. Yep. Thanks. Robin Williams, Whoopi Thanks. Goldberg, yeah. Jelly Crystal. But, you know, you got all these Oscar winners, and then you got Bowie, and it's free. How the hell is they pull this <laughs> off? All right, Mike uh, writes this in. I saw the concert with tickets I won for you, guy. Despite, great show, despite the fact that it ran over almost 45 minutes. Why do you, would you care if you're seeing this show? 
when you see these kind of people coming out on the stage, you want it to keep going. Right. Let's, let's do another hour or two out here. I just want to know what Al's doing with that guy. Is it serious? Is no, it something we need to it know? It seemed like it was serious. All I heard him was singing this. I'm the gay guy on Broadway. What part is he playing, I wonder? The faggot of the opera. Who knows? The faggot of the opera may make an appearance a big ass night of fights, too. Oh, I hope so. This Friday. You never know where he's lurking, Ronnie. Now, at 10 o'clock, we have our interns, our two new interns, who basically I can't even look at because I miss the Tenacious C. Like I miss an old girlfriend, Fez. This is our first night without Tenacious C, the intern, and there is a hole in my heart that is huge. And Wonder Boy was also your favorite. I... Wonder Boy was like a son to you. No, 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 no. I hated Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy? Yeah. And you know what's sad? What? This is, I feel really bad about this. Wonder Boy, his internship was up a couple weeks ago, and he left. I never got to tell him how much I hated him. And I feel bad about that. I thought he was your favorite. No, I can't stand him. I hate him. Oh, I hate him. And I never, I never got to sit down and tell him. You know what, people? Learn. Yeah. Don't hold it inside. Let people know their feelings that you have. All right, well, the two new interns who we haven't named yet, maybe we'll name later tonight, Fuzzy. Very cool. And uh, they're each doing a promo for the Night of Fights that's coming up on Friday night. So the rules are they've each been given a list of copy points about the big-ass Night of Fights coming up this Friday in Wallington, New Jersey. They have to do a 30-second promo promoting the event. They have to produce it themselves with music, and they have to have what we call in the business an actuality. It's uh, Friday night, the big-ass night of fights, too, at the Rec Room in Wallington, New Jersey. If you need uh, any information on how to get there, any directions, all, WNEW.com. Here it is, Fuzzy. Al Dukes versus Black Girl. Pick a winner. Al Dukes. Billy Staples in a Dig Town, a Dig Town Challenge. That means they will be fighting five guys in six rounds. Billy Staples gets one round out of the six. And goes down? Yeah. Does he continue? If he loses a round, does he continue? Sure. He keeps on fighting. Right. He goes one and five in those rounds. you got to say this, though. Even if the guy finishes, he's a champion. Fezzi, I was uh, agreeing with you until I found out Billy Staples, five letter man out of East Meadow High School on Long Island, the Fighting Jets, I'm predicting him to win all six rounds. Wow. The way it'll work is round one is against Dan from Hoboken. The next round is a rematch round against Perry Noy. Then he takes on three super heavyweights, Mike, Dennis, and Rob. And then a sixth round, it's a repeat round against Dan from Hoboken. GVAC versus leg room. Does he hear you picking there? I'm going GVAC. Definitely GVAC. GVAC I like. That's for the message board championship, the RonFez.net championship. Hard Rock Johnny versus Devin. Wow, this one I'm having trouble with. De I have no problem. Give me Devin. Devin is a wall. He is huge. Devin runs away with this fight, Fuzzy. I'll go with Hard Rock Johnny. You're just nice, right? Yeah. I'm the father and son match, Andy versus Brian? I'm going with the father. Yeah, I'm, me too. I'm going with Andy. Now we got the cruel circus acts. We've got our girls from Ron Fez, uh, and they are a fun bunch. They're going to be eating, is it a banana split? Or we have to work this out. Yeah, I think it'll be a nice uh, Sunday. I like a Sunday. On yes. Friday. <laughs> a chocolate Sunday <laughs> off of Frenchie. So all the girls will dress her up like a Sunday and then uh, be able to eat it off her. That's fun. I might even have a snack myself. They're going to turn French bread pizza into a human dessert. This is going to be on yeah. stage this Friday, a big ass night of fights, too. Now, we're also giving away free lap dances. Oh, very nice. From the girls from Gallagher's 2000 from Long Island City, they'll be with us in Wallington, New Jersey at the rec room. So if you are coming out, uh, 877-692-1027, and you want a free lap dance, you'll have to give us a call. Uh, coming up, Fezzi, uh, we'll be uh, looking at the interns. What else we got on board tonight? 
What else do we, we, we have? Oh, to... We have the X Files that we have to take care of tonight. All right, so if you saw the X Files last night, let's do that. Uh, now we'll come back with a game show. It's the X Files. It's your chance to come in studio for a big ass game show and compete for a Panasonic portable DVD player. The way it works is you have to check out these last episodes of the X Files. There was another one on last night on Fox 5. We'll ask a question from that episode. You get it right. You go win an X Files prize pack and qualify to come in studio to compete in a big ass game show where you got to know all X Files trivia from the entire run of the show. So if you're an X Files fan, the season finale next week, uh, give us a call 877 692 1027. It's a Ron Fez show.